it's Leah from Relax Gal, and in this video I have a relaxer recap and a hair update. Before I start talking about my hair, I have a question for you. Are you a subscriber to the Relax Gal Beauty channel? If you are, I have a nice hand clap for you right here. And if you're not, I'm a little disappointed and a little hurt. Seriously. So if you're not a subscriber, just go ahead, hit the button down below and subscribe. It's really simple, it's really easy, and why not do it? So now let's get into why you're here. A relaxer recap and an update on my hair. And actually, I came back from the salon just a couple hours ago. So this is a fresh relaxer, people, okay? Now this relaxer was like kind of special for me um, just because literally like three months ago, I discovered that I had protein overload and that was the reason that I was having all of this problem, all these problems with my hair, with split ends, with hair breakage. This was why my hair looked like a hot mess. And I was on a mission to overcome this protein overload and just a few weeks ago, I declared myself protein overload free. So this is my first touch up in a while where I haven't had a problem with my hair, where I haven't had protein overload, where I haven't been having breakage problems. So to get my hair to this state where it's been, um, since my last touch up, which was 12 weeks ago, I've been focusing on moisture based products. So using moisturizing shampoos, deep conditioners, making sure I'm deep conditioning with heat every single wash day doing pre-poos, doing hot oil treatments. Um, I've also been making sure that I'm moisturizing and sealing quite often. So all of that helped me get to a place where I'm actually really feeling good about where my hair is. So to get ready for this relaxer touch up, I did what I normally do, um, which is really make sure my hair is a clean palette. So the week before my touch up, I washed my hair with a shampoo that I know can help get rid of product buildup and give me kind of like that clean slate to start with for the week. I made sure to do a really good deep condition using heat. And then I also made sure that my hair got fully detangled and stayed detangled up until today when I got my touch up. I found out through experience that it's really important to make sure that your hair stays detangled um, before you have a touch up just because then the stylist kind of gets a little upset when they have to detangle your hair. It also can cause some breakage because they're not being as gentle and taking as much time to detangle as you would because they got to get you in and out of their chair to a certain extent. Plus I've also found that doing detangling right before you're getting your touch up can also irritate your scalp and that can cause some of the burning and stuff that you might end up having once the relaxer touches your head. And then usually I'll also base my own scalp with an oil. I've been using Jamaican black castor oil on my scalp. So that's what I used to base it. I actually did it this morning instead of last night because typically I usually do it the night before, but for some reason I forgot. And so I did it this morning before I went. And even though my stylist does base my scalp herself, I like to do it as well. It's just some extra protection. And then also put um, some a thick leave-in conditioner on the length of my hair as some extra protection from relaxer runoff. So really there's not much to say when it comes to the appointment. It went really well, it was uneventful. Um, when I got there, I got right into my stylist chair and she asked me how my hair had been doing since the last time she'd seen me, which had been 12 weeks. And I told her things had been going really well, that um, I felt like my hair was not suffering from protein overload anymore, that I had stopped using the hair products that had the protein ingredients and that I was really focusing on moisture based products. And she was running her hands through my hair at that point and she said that my hair felt a whole lot better than it had previously and that it was looking good. So it seems like we're on the right track. For the rest of the appointment, it was pretty basic. She based my scalp, um, she put the relaxer in, there was no irritation or anything. She rinsed me out, we did, she shampooed, we deep conditioned and then she blow dragged me straight. She did say that she thinks that um, my edges were looking thin and so she's like nothing necessarily to worry about at this point but she thinks it's probably better for her to rinse out my edges starting on the left side and then the right side and then going through the rest of the rinsing process like she normally does just to make sure that there doesn't end up being any damage or like serious thinning happening there but outside of that I, there was there's really nothing to talk about. The one thing I did want to share is that, so my hair has grown a bit. Like I knew my hair grew 
pretty decently, but I didn't know how decently. So when I got a relaxer touch up the last time, I actually had her cut quite a bit of my hair off. So my hair was pretty much like right at my shoulders, maybe slightly below, but I mean, it looks like, I don't even know how much hair this is that I've gained, but it's, it's a decent amount. Here, I'll show you what the back looks like. So I am happy with the length that my hair has gained and it does look a lot thicker than it has. And so I'm kind of like, ooh, I'm liking the way my hair is looking. Hopefully I can make it look this way when I wash and dry it myself. So when it comes to what I'm going to be doing with my hair until my next touch up, which should be in 12 weeks, um, I'm going to continue with a moisture focused regimen. Um, I might rotate in a little bit of protein products, but it's only going to be to the point where I did have... Um, one time, it was actually the week I declared myself protein overload free, where my hair started feeling really, really mushy and just kind of like a little weak. And I think that was because my hair had too much moisture, which is easier to overcome than too much protein. So I just mixed a little bit of a um, shampoo that had a few protein ingredients and with my protein free shampoo and voila, my hair felt fine. So. If I end up in a situation where my hair starts feeling like mushy and over moisturized, then I'll rotate in some um, products that have protein ingredients. But outside of that, I'm trying to continue to stay away from them um, for now. I'm, I'm just like protein shy. Even though I'm protein overload free, I'm still a little bit of protein shy and I don't want to end up in a place where I'm starting over again for the second time with my hair. And then some of the things that I'm also going to do is I'm going to be trying out a few different um, deep conditioners. I want to find some additional ones that are protein free. I've got one that I, I've actually got two that I like. One that I feel like is really moisturizing for my hair. The other, not so much. So that one, once I'm done with it, is going to be something that I don't plan to keep as part of my everyday regular regimen. But the other one is, and I want to find that like secondary, um, deep conditioner that's protein free that you know I can use if hey for some reason I can't get my hands on my main one I have a backup. I also want to focus a bit more on my ends. I feel like they're still a little bit more raggedy than I'd like particularly on my right side. So there's going to be a lot of um, extra probably deep conditioning that's happening there, extra product that's being applied and probably bagging my ends a bit more than I have been. Um, so I'm really going to be focusing on that part of my hair going forward. Okay, so that's it. That's how my salon visit went. Pretty uneventful. And those are the things that I'm planning to focus on when it comes to my hair care during the next 12 weeks. If you have any tips for really keeping your ends moisturized and taking care of your ends, giving them some extra special love, please leave those down below in the comments. And I'm also still curious to hear about everyone's favorite protein-free hair products, whether it's your shampoo, deep conditioner, leave-in conditioner, I don't care. I'd love to hear about it, so leave it in the comments below. And be on the lookout for my next video, which I will see you in. Bye.